So you, uh, what you do really well in your, in your work is you help us sort of put skin on the bones of how sort of transformation, mm. like malformation, transformation, all of it, how it sort of happens. It happens these really sort of material mm. ways. Mm. Um, and that's a great, I, I, in my own work, I do some work trying to help people sort of think materially about things we tend to think as being just spiritual or something like yeah. that. It's wonderful. But sometimes I get accused of, there's a boundary between explaining something and explaining something away. Um, and so I wanted to ask you, um, what is the role of the Holy Spirit mm. um, in, these, in, in this whole ecology of formation, but maybe particularly in sort of Christian transformation? Yeah, so um, I get this question a lot, <laughs> which means obviously I need to work on something. Um, I know you care about the Holy Spirit. Yeah, no, 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 no. and it's near and dear to you. It's um, so it's not the spirit or the practices; it's the spirit of the practices and the spirit in the practices. So, <clears throat> the way I imagine it is, and I think this is a very sacramental way of thinking it of it, right? So that um, the idea is, God knows that we are creatures of habit. God knows that we are material, communal, social, ritual animals. And so the gift he gives us in the spirit are um, rhythms and routines and practices that he makes a promise to, that the spirit is active and living in them. Mm -hmm. So in, in that sense, I imagine these, these practices, and especially the sacraments, are, are these conduits, these channels of the spirit's transforming grace and, and power so that I don't have to sort of be um, casting about wondering where I can get in the way of the Holy Spirit because actually it's like, it turns out it's there every Sunday, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, um, now, so yeah, I totally don't want to naturalize uh, um, Christian formation, but I also don't want to, you, you, you can, there's sort of two ways to be heretical about this, right? You can, mm -hmm. uh, you could either naturalize it mm -hmm. or you could so spiritualize it. It sounds like you've been working it. on these things. And yeah. you disembody it. And then, then what happens is, is you actually just end up ceding the formative power to all the other liturgies in your life. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I, I hope it's both and. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes, you know, I also come out of, of Pentecostal traditions. And so uh, it, it's interesting when I'm talking to my Pentecostal sisters and brothers, I try to sort of, you know, gently emphasize to them that, you know, the same spirit that makes the sun rise every day mm -hmm. <laughs> promises to show mm -hmm. up in the Lord's Supper. Mm -hmm. But when I'm talking to my Episcopalian friends, uh -huh. I sort of, you know, emphasize, you know, the spirit of God could surprise you sometime, right? <laughs> like he, he can do extraordinary things. Uh -huh. uh, um, so it's, it's trying to inhabit that tension. And it, it usually depends on what demons you're trying to exercise, so to speak, right? <laughs> where the emphasis lands. That's great.